pregame.com. Wednesday night, NBA playoff action. Game two, we've got the LA Clippers at Memphis. This is going to be my video best bet. I'm going to make a play on the total. I'm going to be on the under. But before we get to me, i got to ask you, Brian, how does Memphis bounce back after a devastating loss like they suffered Sunday night? I think they have the chance to bounce back. I mean, I went into that game, and I thought the line was pretty, pretty much where it should have been. Um, you're getting a team in Memphis that uh, I think they rely too much on their three-point shooting. They're not a very good three-point shooting team. And they get hot at the beginning of the game. They get away from driving the lane. And as we've all done, if you're not a competitive athlete, I'm not that competitive when I play. If you get a little bit of a league, you, you tend to relax. Even though they're professionals, I believe they relaxed in that game, and that's what cost them it. Um, it, when you start off hot from three-point range and you don't drive the lane, that's what got them in trouble. And uh, they, they didn't draw fouls. They didn't take, uh, take uh, the Clippers to go to the line. They made it easy on the Clippers in the second half. Well, second half, fourth quarter. <laughs> this whole thing happened in the fourth quarter. And, uh, you know, I'll admit I had a play on Memphis in that game and uh, wasn't happy about it. But watching the game, this sets up to me a big play for the total. And, of course, the first game went over. They scored 197 points. The total was 184, 184 and a half. Uh, we're looking here, uh, we're taping on Monday. This game's on Wednesday. We're looking at a line of Memphis minus six with a total of 185. Not a big adjustment from the first game, even though they went way over the total. And everything that you said that went on in that first game, to me, sets up why I like the under. Memphis got out to the quick start. It was 32-12 to 12 in the first quarter. I mean, ridiculous start. Everything they were putting up was going in. When you get a lead like that, and they maintained that 20-point lead pretty much throughout the game, you get lackadaisical. They did not play intense defense. They were going up. It almost became like a pickup game. And even with the big lead, you know, when you have a lead and you're on offense, you start milking some of the shot clocks. Mm -hmm. you, you take time off the clock. They weren't doing that, and it was driving me crazy. They're coming down the floor. They're putting up shots early in the shot clock, and just they got out of control. They thought the game was won, and I think they quit playing intense defense on the other side, too. When you're up that big, you're not trying to stop the other team. So the tempo of the game became a very up-paced tempo, and then you had... For the hotness that Memphis had at the beginning of the game, the Clippers had that at the end of the game. They hit three three-pointers on three consecutive possessions down the stretch. It's nine points, you know, in a matter of seconds, and the game then just spiraled out of control. You will see a different game from Memphis on Wednesday. They're going to come into this game absolutely focused, backs to the wall after losing the game the way they did. And defensively, prior to Sunday's game, the last 20 games, Memphis has held 18 out of 20 opponents to under 100 points. Now, they, they held another team to under 100, but, I mean, they were holding teams into the 80s during that stretch. And they're gonna, I say they play lockdown basketball on Wednesday night, and I'm going to come back, and I'm going to make this my video best bet of the week. I like the under. Tell me where I'm wrong. I don't think you're wrong here. And, in fact, there's something out there that you didn't discuss that actually may help the under. Karan Butler's not playing, and I don't think he's going to be back for the rest of the series. The Clippers don't have a lot of offensive weapons. Uh, they've got basically two or three guys that take all the shots. Without Butler, he's more of a slasher. I don't know, from the defensive standpoint, I haven't looked at the metrics for that. But as an offensive player, I mean, he, he's a major contributor to that offense. Without him there, they're going to be searching for shots. And if this game is not a 20-point game like the first one was for the most of the way, it's a tighter game, each possession is going to mean more. So as they're coming back and forth, you know, each time that up and down the floor, more deliberate, working for better shots. And I just see this game being an under. And I'm going to take it. We're going to make it our video best bet. And every week when we do make our video best bet, Brian, we give a coupon, and that coupon this week is going to be Memphis in the number 10. All one word, Memphis in the number 10, and that's going to get you a $10 discount. When you go to checkout at pregamepros.com, load up your shopping cart, put that coupon code in. We'll take $10 off it, and Brian, if it happens to be a $10 package, that's on RJ, and 
you know, he doesn't like that that often, so check that out, but you can save 10 bucks on We should probably each put a $10 package up just to spite him. Just to spite yeah. him, you know. Okay, well, we'll see if we fly that, you All know. Right. Hope he's not watching. <laughs> All right, he's Brian Leonard and Marco D'Angelo. Thanks for watching. You can carry on the conversation at pregamevideos.com. Check it out. If you have any questions, you can ask us there. And with the NBA playoffs, we'll have continuing coverage throughout at pregame.tv. Thanks. We'll be back with more videos later in the week.